In my previous video, I showed the installation of the OBD2 cable and the OBD Link LX Bluetooth adapter. Today, I will show how to connect and use it with your Android device. Press the button on the lower left of the OBD Link LX. You will see the BT light on the right start blinking rapidly. Within two minutes, you need to do the following steps. On your device, press the settings button. Pick the Bluetooth menu. Turn on Bluetooth. Sometimes if it's on, you have to reset it to see new devices. You should see OBD Link LX. You can select it. Press OK to pair the device. It is now connected. Here is a view of the OBD Link LX that's next to the driver's seat, showing it connected to the Android tablet. Now we need to get the Scan My Tesla app from the Google Play Store. Type the name into the search box. It should come up as the first item. Select that. Here you can see some screenshots from the app, uh, reviews and ratings. And you can also click about this app and it should give some more information about it, what it can do. Also how it now supports the Model 3. It also has some external links and updates. It is a little pricey at $9.49 for this app, but over time with updates and new features, I think it gives a good value. Press the button to purchase and then accept. After a minute or so, it downloads and then installs. The app will now appear on your home screen. Press it to start. You will now be prompted for your car. Select the Model 3. Next, it will ask you for which device to connect. Choose the OBD Link LX. It connects successfully. Press close. Here's another view of the app starting up. The OBD Link commands and status show up in the lower left hand corner. Now I'm going to do an overview of the Scan My Tesla app, some of the main sections and things you should know. There is a main menu bar that goes across the top of the app. On the left side is the tab menu. This allows you to select among the nine different tabs, which have all different information and can be configured. These include performance, speed, temps, HVAC, battery, total, trip, all, and new. The tab is currently set for performance. Press the wrench icon in the upper left to show the settings. You can change the car. This is also handy as a reset if anything locks up. This allows you to choose the Bluetooth device. Switch from Imperial to Metric Units and back. If you really make a mess of things, you can reset all the tabs or reset a particular tab to its original factory setting. The HUD button allows the screen to go backwards so it can reflect onto a HUD screen on a windshield. The Tesla Logger token allows you to connect to a data gathering software. I'll probably do that in a separate video. There's another menu on the upper right hand side of the screen which has an arrow with a circle around it. This menu controls the items on the tab. For example, it can make the gauges bigger, smaller, smaller again, back one size bigger, change the gauge type, 
from a digital with an analog dial to just digital to a smaller format and finally to a, a graphing format that goes horizontally and back to the dial format. There are a couple of trip settings if you want to use a, and keep track of trip features and statistics. You can also create and delete tabs and you can paste items. The circle button on the lower right hand side allows you to set filters and turns the tab menu on and off. Now let's go over the different tabs. From performance, where you go to speed. Individual items that are listed on the tab depend on if the car is in park or drive. When in drive, there are more items listed. Items that don't show up until they are reached, for example, 0 to 50 and 0 to 60 times, also will show up later. On this tab, the speed is a large dial with a digital insert, and the other items are small. The next tab is temps. There are a large number of items that have temperature readings, such as the battery cells and pack, the powertrain, brakes, outside, inside, etc. Next, we have the HVAC system. Next up is battery. The battery tab has a huge number of different items. Current battery voltage, max pack, and min pack voltages are interesting. We also have nominal full pack, nominal remaining, are used to calculate percent full. DC charge is the total supercharger or CHAdeMO charging. AC charge total is level 1, 120 volts, or level 2, 240 volt charging. My car has about 10.5% supercharging over the last 22 months. Charge cycles, which calculates the equivalent full 0 to 100% charges that the car has had over time, mine is 144. You also get some numbers for the 12 volt battery. The total tab shows a cumulative listing of items since the car was first put into service. These items are like a lifetime odometer, if you will. Trip has items that are similar to the total tab, but they are for a certain period of miles or time. They can be reset as needed like a trip odometer setting. These are good for, say, tracking the miles and kilowatt hours for a long distance trip. All, like the name implies, are all of the items that Scan My Tesla recognizes currently for the CAN system on the Tesla Model 3. Basically, all of the other tabs that we have seen grab the items from the All tab. I counted 118 data stream items. I'm going to change the gauge type and see how many gauges we can fit on one page. At this size, you can almost fit all of them on one page. It is actually crazy tiny, and you could almost read it close up. However, for in the car, I would recommend a much larger size gauge. New is a blank tab where you can add your own items. For example, I created a tab with speed, consumption, rear torque, and rear power. This brings up the last menu for this app. Let's bring up the All tab and copy one of the items. I will give a link in the video description that covers all the references for these different signal details. Let's select DC charge total. This item now becomes highlighted. 
If you continue pressing, a context menu comes up. You can delete the item, move the item up or down, or copy the item. I'm going to press copy. Now go back to the new tab. Press the arrow with the circle button and then select paste. When an item is selected, as this one is, you can press the up button to move the item up or down and the center is copy. You can also do this by holding down the item and bringing up the context menu. And in this case, I deleted it. Let's look at the gauge types again. The original is in digital format. Then we will select the small format, then the horizontal format, and finally the digital format with a dial. That about wraps up my overview of the Scan My Tesla app. Next, we'll see how it works as a speedometer in the car. Here I have the Scan My Tesla app set up for speedometer tab with the main speedometer as the primary item on the page. Uh, you can move it around so it best fits your viewing angle. It's quite interesting to watch the numbers since the Scan My Tesla app uses a tenth place decimal. Uh, you get a little bit finer detail than the one in the car. And of course the one in the car is a rounded off version of this data stream. Some suggestions to the developer for Scan My Tesla would be to add some options for colors on the border on the top screen. For example, at night, the blue reflects on the windshield. If you could pick a black or dark gray, it would blend in better. Another improvement would be to allow different gauges for different items instead of having them all one type. They kind of do this on the speed page with the speedometer as a gauge and the other items as a horizontal bar. This is constantly evolving software, so it's definitely a great start and looks like a welcome addition for drivers that like to look at gauges, data, and stats. When you scroll up, you can see the other items, including the 0 to 60 and 0 to 50 numbers, albeit they are very slow in this example. The next one will show you one that I did on a private road. I never knew how quick my rear wheel drive Model 3 was until I did this test. Not too bad, 4.65 seconds, 0 to 60. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. It helps the channel grow. See you in the next video.